You are listening to 91.9 KCSS, Turlock Valley's True Alternative, and the voice of California State University. Stanislaus is Eric Vega with your Eric Vega Hour. The starving artist here today with me, the one and only, the amazing, the fantastic, the fabulous, Moon Trent. That's right. How you doing, Eric? I'm doing good, Moon. Doing how Eric? are you? Good. All right. Thank you for coming on the show today. Thanks for inviting me. I was... I was really happy to get your email. I really, well, I have really just wanted to have you on here since this started. Because, really? yeah, I really have. Cool. You've done so much around here, and I feel like you're just such a, 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 a an amazing artist to the area. Thank you. You offer something unique, something different. Because I've had a lot of uh, heavy metal bands, and I've had a lot of pop artists. Mm-hmm. What would you classify your music as? Well,. The the albums I have out right now are pretty much pop, <laughs> okay. dance pop and uh, rock pop. A couple different bands I've been in, we do different styles. But now I've moved to the unplugged realm. Nice, this yes, year. I know. And what I've, got you doing that? What made you decide to do that? I got sick of computers. Really? <laughs> for making music, Amen I just to got that. a little tired of it, and uh, I wanted somebody to play a real guitar mm-hmm. right next to me, a real person. Yeah. And do real music. Mm-hmm. So I, we sometimes we don't even use mics or amps. We just kind of throw it up on stage. That's and the best way to do it. Yeah, too. and if your songs are good, they'll be good on in any format. So hopefully these, I'm I'm in the studio right now working on a new album mm-hmm. that is unplugged, and uh, hopefully, you know, everyone digs it. My new direction. Very cool. So when would you say that Little Moon? When did Little Moon come about? Little Moon Trent. When did you? When did your love for music um, start to show? I was in school bands in elementary, mm-hmm. and, you know, choir and all that through school, and then in college at MJC up in Modesto, I took piano and voice. So you know, the whole time, ever since I was smaller, uh, you know, single digit age, <laughs> I've been into music. Um, probably because my grandmother. Uh-huh. Gave me a record player and some records and took me to go see the concerts in the park up in Modesto okay. every summer. And I credit her with, you know, a lot with my, well, my love of music mm-hmm. and the fact that I just keep doing it. Very cool. Yeah. So would you say that she, she or is anyone else been a personal influence for you in your um, music? There's lots of, <clears throat> I like to see lots of bands, local bands. Mm-hmm. So I get something from every show I go to, mm-hmm. I take something away. So everyone inspires me. I'm sure I'll learn something here today. Yes. <laughs> I we're, hope so. Came we're learning from way. you. Yes, we're learning from you. So, <laughs> um, What about your musical influences from your musical style? Um, who are well, your big musical my influences? My favorite band in the world is Aztec Camera. Okay. And uh, a lot of people don't know who they are. They were an <laughs> early okay. 80s British pop band. So Google Aztec Camera and check out that group. And... Uh, uh, when I was growing up, I was, of course, a huge Eurythmics fan, uh-huh. Culture Club. Of course, I had Michael Jackson on the wall for some pop music. But I was really into the the alternative uh-huh. weirdos like uh, Sig Sig Sputnik and uh-huh. Fuzzbox and some of the stranger bands that were coming out of Britain at the time were right up my alley. Mm-hmm. And that's the kind of music that I chose to try to emulate. Yeah. So do you write your own music, correct? Yeah, I write my own music. And what is um, that process? I co-write like? with some other people, but this new album is going to be the first album where I wrote everything. You wrote everything in this the one. The music, the words, everything. So we'll see how this one comes out. What was what is that process like for you to make music? The well, process? first off, what what was the process like before when you're doing um, um, your pop music? I've worked with different artists. They do instrumental tracks. I've worked with a couple main people and they give me an instrumental track, and if I like it, if it works with what I'm working on, and they like what I've come up with, then mm-hmm. we record it and make a song out of it. Mm-hmm. I just, you know, would come up with the melody and the words to a lot of other people's music. Mm-hmm. And I thought, you know, I've got all these other songs that I've written on my own. Mm-hmm. I think it's time to, you know, do them. And this is the one, the this new one you're talking about? the new album. It's called Silver Giraffes. Mm-hmm. And I'm in the studio right now working on it with Mark Blackheart. And Candice Lamb plays guitar for me and sings mm. background vocals. Now, have you performed any of his music yet? Absolutely. You We've have done. I know you I had a show. I want to say three or four shows uh-huh. with this unplugged format, and it's been really well received. 
it's really different for me because I'm usually singing to a CD. Mm-hmm. I'm usually my own karaoke show. And now that's not the case. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, speaking of, I do have a show. We're going to be performing Saturday, this coming April 30th mm-hmm. here, up mm-hmm. in Modesto at Jack's on H at 9 o'clock. Okay, Jack's on H. Be there, everyone. Jack's on H. What made Formerly you? Clayton's. I'm excited because oh, Adele okay. played there a couple of years ago. Oh, really? At Clayton's. Really? Really. Oh, wow. And now what it's Jack's on H, so I'm going to be on the same stage as Adele. I had no idea. I didn't know Adele. I, I knew you were playing. I didn't know Adele was playing. <laughs> well, that was two years ago. <laughs> oh, She's okay. not coming back, I can guarantee you. <laughs> yeah. Oh, have I have. You? Yeah, I have performed at Clayton's. But yes. Clayton's is no more. Yes. Jack's on H. Yes. Jack's on H. <laughs> So why did you choose now to do this unplugged? Because I'm really familiar. Honestly, I'm familiar with your pop stuff. So this is right. a big. I've always been a big fan of artists jumping out of their their zone to experiment with other stuff. Right. But I've, I always it what makes me wonder what is it that made you decide at this point to do it. I just. I don't know. Tell you the truth, it's just it's time. Mm-hmm. It was just time for me to do it. Is this something that's always been in the back of your head oh, that yeah, you wanted to absolutely. do? Absolutely. This album, I've been you know, working on, on and off, not physically, but mentally, <laughs> I've been preparing for this record for a long time. And what is the songwriting process like for you? What is the inspiration for it? Does it come? Um, walking down the street, if my feet make a rhythm, or I hear a car, or I hear some music in the air, you know, um, I just can come up with a song like that. Mm-hmm. I'll call my cell phone and leave it on there, or I have a little recorder that I'll record, you know, music and songs with, or I'll call one of my music friends and sing into their cell phone. (laughs) I've done that, you know, and Uh and we've come up with songs and we've recorded them and they're on my albums. So it's, it's really fun. But, um, just, I don't have a set way, Mm -hmm. Eric. I don't have a set way to do it. I don't sit in a dark room with candles and incense burning, (laughs) light, uh, you know, candles and all this. I don't do that. It'll just come to you. It's daytime music. Uh Uh-huh. Mostly. Very nice. Very interesting. Thank you. This weekend, Saturday, Jack's on H, 9 o'clock, Moon Trent will be there. I want to play a song by you. Okay. Is that okay? That sounds great. And I'm going to play, what am I going to play, Moon? Uh, I don't know. You tell me. How Are you going to play something off the new record, or do you want to play something off the first record? Let's play the something one, off the middle this one. one. Okay. Oh, you want to play the middle one? Well, yeah. Okay. What do you want to... Let's see. What do I want to hear from there? And we are definitely going to talk about the art okay. here, too. Absolutely. <laughs> that we can do that. I think maybe... Um, I was in this group, The Julian. There's a song called Crossfire Hero. Okay. Maybe you could play that one. Okay. okay. Crossfire Hero here at KCSS. Um, you guys go on my website. You can look Moon Trent up. I have his MySpace link on there, but we were just talking about MySpace a while ago. If you don't want to look up on MySpace, you can look him up on Facebook. I'm his friend, and he's also liked on my Facebook. So go on there, and I'm sure you have info on your Facebook about the show this Saturday. Yes. Right? You can flyer. go on there, check it out. There's a flyer on there. And here is Moon Trent with Crossfire Hero. Thanks for listening. <laughs> All right, we're back with Moon Trent in the studio. My name is Garrett. I'm just here with you for a couple of questions. Sounded awesome. You know, when I listen to music, I always try to think of, you know, what does this sound like? What did, and I always think of initially draw comparisons. And i uh, got to be honest, I'm having a hard time with yours. It's a very unique sound, very original sounding. Wow, um, Is there anyone, when you play music, that you're sort of, is there any sort of sound you're trying to sound like? Not copy, but sort of like, you know, like a... Not really, but recently when I was in the studio, this guy told me that I sounded like the singer from The Violent Femmes. Okay, so I can see that a little bit, a little, little bit of that. Bit. Yeah. Is it in Gordon Gano? I don't know, I but I just started getting into that. But yeah, definitely. Okay. I love that band. So that yeah. was a, a really nice compliment. I honestly lately I've been listening to a lot of like female vocalists. Really? Like Doris Day, Sarah okay. Vaughan. Yeah. I I've been finding some great records. Yeah. At, there's this a, a store called Strawberry Alarm Clock in Merced. They have sweet they name. They carry my records. Oh, nice. And I go in there and shop, and they have a really great selection. Yeah. Real cheap stuff, so, you know, cheap yeah. CDs that you can get. So it's one of the last record stores, right? How many record stores are left? Yeah, you don't see a lot of them you know, here of, and there. Especially just like one-off records. So stores. I can get your stuff on vinyl? Because I have a huge vinyl collection. I so. wish I had known that. I have two releases <laughs> on vinyl. Really? I was in a band called Brown Star, and we put out a brown 7-inch vinyl I could get you. Okay. And I also put out a 12-inch of my single uh, Hard Candy Christmas when I lived in England. Okay. Cool. I'll, I'll have to keep my eyes out. I won't and forget Brownstone. If you guys have record players in here, I could have brought some vinyl. Yeah, we can 
tinker with that any time too. Okay. That, the mention you mentioned the female artist, I forgot to totally send out a rest in peace to uh, Dorothy Parker. Wait, was it? I'm sorry, Phoebe. Wow, Dorothy Parker's a writer. Phoebe Snow. Did Phoebe she? Snow passed away yesterday. Oh, yeah, so she sang that song, Poetry Man. If anyone, yes, she did. Uh, I've got like five of her songs on my iPod. Yeah. So, anyways, not pod. not to interrupt, but I forgot no, to show to rest too. in peace to uh, in peace. Phoebe Snow. But um, all right, more of a lighthearted gander here. Um, if you go to lunch with anyone uh, in the music world, who would it be? Who, who could you sit down and pick their brain for like an hour? It doesn't even have to be the music. Yeah, it could even be a celebrity. It doesn't even. Have, it could be anyone. Boy, that's. I want to go to lunch with Elton John. Okay. I want to be on his label. Yeah. I want to talk to him about some connections. <laughs> that, that would. <laughs> you know what? <laughs> Definitely. Yeah, that would be awesome. That would be awesome. Yeah. Now you said you you live in Merced. Are you from I, from Merced or? I was actually born here in Turlock. Okay. And I grew up in Denair. and then when I was a teenager, I ran away to L.A. <laughs> and then I ran back. Cool. And then I ran away again. Yeah. <laughs> and then I came back. <laughs> well, I'm back now. Hey, we all bounce around. That's I the know. fun of it. I, I move like every two years. I'm somewhere new, it seems. It gives you a new, new change of scenery every once in a while. Yeah. I noticed you had one song on there uh, called Modesto on one of your I older albums. Do, what, do you draw a lot from around here? Where does that come from? I'm a big fan of Modesto. Yeah, I think it's great. I love Modesto. Yeah. I lived there for three years. Um, yeah, I try. You know how Morrissey writes about where he lives? Wherever he is. Wherever you, okay. he is. Yeah. Talks about Sloan Square and all that kind of stuff. I thought that it would be fun to write about around here. So I wrote Modesto. I have a few songs that are local based. Awesome. Yeah. That's really cool. Yeah. Yeah. That's where, I, where I'm now, so it's where I'm drawing everything from. Cool. Where do you want to take it next? I mean, do you have something in the works already? Do you want to, I mean, where do you want to take your next step as far as location and where you want to end up? Oh, I don't know. I, I don't know. Canada looks nice. You were saying yeah. Canada earlier. I'm asking the personal questions. What do you want to do with your life? What do I want to do? <laughs> I want to rock. When yeah. I grow up, I want to rock. Cool. Mountain John. Cool, cool. That is awesome. Yeah, jamming with Elton John on stage at the same time. Whoa. That would be gonna... cool put that out there but that would be cool <laughs> come on if they let Eminem sing with Elton John they should definitely let, let you sing Eminem with Elton do it. John I mean, really. yeah <laughs> so what do you do outside of, uh, outside of music just for just for kicks and giggles do you I mean do you do you do something else I mean do you have any other hobbies interests I run a record things? label oh wow out of Dave and I my partner David's here yeah say hi Dave hi hey Empire Strikes <laughs> Back t-shirt alright we yeah, like that we do a lot of Star Wars talking here in the studio <laughs> so it's usually when people start to tune out but we talk about it anyways because we love it. That's awesome. Yeah. Sorry. So uh, <laughs> we have this record label called Timmy Cat Records. Okay. In fact, it's our 20-year anniversary. This year, wow. we're putting out a compilation album. We have all kinds of people on it. A new Jason Lytle track, uh, the drummer from The Violent Femmes, awesome. Victor DiLorenzo, and Fuzzbox that I mentioned from my childhood. They gave me a track. Cool. Wow, that's so cool it's crazy. that you get to you um, get to do that. If you go to my Moon Trent Facebook, there's a note that kind of lists all the bands that are going to be on it, and uh, it's coming this year. <laughs> Cat Box, it's called. Yeah. Um, now, what, what do you? What, what's your favorite part? I'm sorry, I'm stealing one of your questions. What's your favorite part of a of a live show? I mean, what do you? What the gets end? you going about about <laughs> when it's over? When it's right? over, and I can breathe and drink a Diet Pepsi. Um, no, my favorite part of the show is to see the people that show up. I like the before the show buzz, yeah. the middle of the show buzz, and the after show buzz. I really like the buzz <laughs> that, like the that buzz. happens when live music is performed. That's cool. It really changes, you know, That's the dynamic cool. of the room. Yeah. If how, you're good. How do you, how do you deal with it, um, criticism and at the same time praise? I mean, because you've been, you've been at it for a little while now, so yeah. you've probably had a good share of yeah. both criticism and then plenty of critical acclaim and, and praise. So. Is there a way that you've gone about dealing with maybe a, a negative comment and then maybe dealing with a, an adoring comment? I mean... I just... I save everything. I clip it out of the f- newspaper. I okay. have, like, some scrapbooks. I keep stuff, but the way I deal with it is just, you know, that's somebody's opinion. I don't right. really get too much negative... Publicity. Well, because I know some people won't read it. They won't read a no, review, good or bad. Everything. They won't look at anything. I'm bad. I read everything. <laughs> I believe everything. No, I don't believe everything. <laughs> I read everything and I save everything and uh, it's cool. I like I like to be in the newspapers. Yeah, <laughs> of course. Hopefully, I'm going to be in there Friday. They oh really? Tomorrow? Oh no, two days from now. 
I think there's. I'm gonna have a little blurb in the Modesto Be Seen section, hopefully. Oh, sweet! I'll have to check that out. Yeah. Yeah, I'll have to read that. I love reading the Modesto paper. I know. <laughs> I buy the scene section every Friday just to see what's going on. Yeah, I definitely. love their scene section in the Modesto Be. I love that. That's Lisa Mulligan Renner runs that. Yeah, she actually, she just did an out. article on the show that we're doing. Isn't so she awesome? She's doing that. I should see that Friday. I haven't. I have no Is idea. Friday's coming out too. I think so. I think we'll, well both I, be in I the paper on Friday. Paper what do you know? Friday. We'll have to we'll pick up the paper together and okay. read it at the same time over some coffee. Okay. You you buy. You pick it up. I'll, okay. I'll show up. <laughs> But uh, and then Merced, remember, <laughs> you can deliver it to me. Oh, That's I see. What's not going a problem. Here. I won't mind at all. <laughs> yeah. Um. Um. Anyways, by the way, was the word wolf? It was wolf, right? <laughs> Ah, uh, sorry. Uh, my From the trivia question. Earlier? Yeah, sorry. My my That's mother okay. my mother texted me the answer, so thanks, mom. Nice. It just shows that I'm smart because I came from a smart woman. That's so, right. Yeah. So between me and my mom, you got nothing. Anyways, I'm sorry. I'll get back to That's the music. Okay. What are we gonna play now? I, I'm want to get on this what, what which which track is this we're going to it's track I forgot. 7 what here is it? uh it is pink noise pink noise yeah. this is a weird album track on the in person cd which came out last year it's on itunes all that but this song is called pink noise pink noise anything we should know about this song the, the text of it the, the meaning of it it's like a rap song oh it's really one of my only rap song and it's kind of like my musical personal statement oh this is your musical personal statement i like that Okay. okay. So listen to the lyrics. Kids. Yeah. So listen to the lyrics. See what you like. This is uh, "Pink Noise" by Moon Trent. If you are just joining us, that was Moon Trent with the song "Pink Noise" from the album "Stereo Moon Trent in Person." Is that right? Yeah, it's called uh, In Person. In Person, okay. wasn't sure if it was stereo or in person. No. In Person. In Person. Um, uh, let's talk about this lovely, lovely art that you have on here. In the In Person record? <laughs> in uh, in all your, actually in all. <laughs> yes, There's the a lot of different artwork. Um, I work with, I try to work with somebody different every time. Do you? And uh, the artwork for Silver Giraffes is being done in Australia this time. Okay. Uh, Elaine Sachs at imposto.net. Mm-hmm. Is, all her artwork is up there. And uh, she's doing the album cover. With it looks like a, I don't know what it looks like giraffe ball. It looks cool. Really? Yeah. It sounds all, exciting. It's really neat. It's all these giraffes kind of smushed together. It's <laughs> really cool. Now, what is it that? Um, how how does that work? Every time you release an album, how do you decide what the art is going to be? Do you meet a certain it's really artist? It's hard to decide. Mm-hmm. Um, like this time, for instance, I just gave Elaine the title, and she went and just did something. I think she did it on the plane back to Australia, uh-huh. and then she sent me some stuff. And I really liked a couple of them. So I wrote her back, and she's working on that. And she's working on the Catbox CD cover, too, Mm -hmm. the compilation we're working on. She's going to do both. Oh, very cool. just, um, I don't know, whoever I like. Really? Yeah. So it's not really a certain image that you have in your head? You just kind of go out and shop and see? Yeah. Very cool. See, you know, if I see somebody that I like, their art, I'll try to approach them. I try to use local people, mostly, Mm -hmm. or people that used to live in the valley that... Mm -hmm have gone on to Los Angeles, New York, New Orleans, wherever, Australia. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. People move, but you can always stay in touch. Well, since I don't have the very um, awaited album that you have coming out here soon, I'm going to go through this last one that you did okay. in person. I'm going to go through each song. Okay. I want you to give me one sentence description of okay. each song. Ready? Okay. Okay, number one, invitation. Intimate. Number two, it's free. A promise. Number three, the burden of bad dreams. Um, a plea. <laughs> I don't know. That's kind of like a plea. Number four, down. Memory. Number five, despite straight lines. A protest. Number six, things are turning around. A hopeful chant. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Number seven, pink noise. Yeah, pink noise is... Uh, Static. Number eight, the train song. That's my new direction, actually. Okay. Number nine, down. It's the acoustic version. Okay. There's two versions of down, the computer version and the acoustic version. Number ten, easy disco. Easy disco is an old pale song that we did acoustic for my album. Okay. And number 11 is a phone interview, correct? That's right. Okay, good. I, I, I got an interview. Now, um, we were talking about... Very interesting. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we were talking about the Mama Awards. The Mama Awards. Somebody who has been nominated four 
four times. I know it. That's four, an accomplishment. Four times in five years, and sh- and I still haven't won. <laughs> 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 but it's really fun to go to the awards. Yes. It's nice to, to sit there and see your name up on the screen, uh-huh. hear people cheer, and then hear it go to somebody else. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's the best part. That's cool. <laughs> Where I smile and clap. What years and was it? Because you were just nominated for the last I one, I was too, nominated right? for the last one okay. in 2010, 2009, not in eight. But in 07 and in 06. Really? Wow. The next one, five, fifth time's the charm. I'm hoping. <laughs> I hope. They, you know, that would be cool. Yes, yes, You know, definitely. the harder you work, the more they recognize you. So just, I just have to keep being visible. Yeah. And speaking of that, you said you mentioned to me earlier the reason you, I mean, you told me why you decided to go unplugged, but really you were tired of computers, correct? Well, I was tired of making music with computers because mm-hmm. I've done that for a long time. Mm-hmm. And I wanted to see if I even could t- to do it, mm-hmm. you know. I, I was starting to wonder, <laughs> do I need to be tied to a CD and sing, you know, my songs like that for the rest of my life? Mm-hmm. Or or can I find somebody in, like, you know, semi-band style, you know? Mm-hmm. So Candice Lamb is... Uh, singer of this band Fergus mm-hmm. out in Merced and she's come on board learned all my material and we were halfway through an album really yeah and she sings and she's really great so she's like a one man band type of thing yeah well uh, um, a lot of the reasons that I have and I super duper wanted you here on the show and a lot of reasons I have these artists on the show is because uh, I think that it's it's a good time for people uh, audience members who are not artists and those who are to understand how much work this really is because yeah. it really is a good amount of work. You mm-hmm. are like you're a one man show, really. Yeah. You're doing, you're making the music on a computer, right? And you're singing it, you're performing it, you're promoting it. You're your own everything, correct? Right. Pretty much. I have some friends that um, Tina Broughton helps me book shows up in Modesto. Mm-hmm. David Cole, of course, is like my manager, helps mm-hmm. me make all the right decisions and go in the right direction and not do stupid career moves. Uh-huh. You know. That's, I have fun. I have a nice team. Yeah. It, you know, it, it sounds like it's just me, but it's not. Yeah. There's a lot of people that now, make... Now, did it take a while for you to get there, though, to have your team? Yeah, absolutely. I fire people every week. <laughs> oh, really? New, I'm like Donald I'm Trump. fired at the end of this show right now. <laughs> I know. I'm afraid. Um, no, I. Uh, it did take a while, and uh, but yeah, now I have my team, and it's working. I'm doing stuff like this, and doing my show Saturday, you know. I'm still doing stuff. What is it that you love perf- um, the most about performing your music? Um, I don't know. I kind of like to impart. It's not that I'm a poet, but when I'm doing my music, I feel like I'm sharing part of me in a poetic style. Mm-hmm. I think that's what I like is to share and to call it art. Mm-hmm. I guess that's what I get out of it is that I can call myself an artist. Because I show up and do shows, mm-hmm. and I keep putting albums out, and other people call me an artist, so I must be an artist. Yeah, <laughs> I guess yeah. so. Yes, you're an artist. And um, have you found any, what are some of the struggles that you've had as an artist? Keeping bands together. Is that one? Getting gigs, people being late to practice, you know, all the usual stuff. It's just, that's why in 2007, I decided to just concentrate on the moon trent Mm -hmm. vehicle Mm -hmm. just me myself and not form a band or Mm -hmm. form a project or anything like that Mm -hmm. so that's when i started releasing um records under my own name Mm -hmm. before that i had been in some other groups and those records are out there but just the moon trent stuff is Mm -hmm. what i do nowadays do you feel like it's easier for you to perform as a solo artist Oh, yeah, it absolutely, because, really. I mean, I wanted to do this interview, I jumped in the car, Dave and I drove up here at the end, Yeah, I don't have, to, yeah. I don't have a band to drag with me, uh-huh. you know? <laughs> we're not doing a live performance, or I would have brought Candace with me, but, you know, it's it's really easy, yeah. if we want to practice, she just comes to my house, I go to her house, we go That's to the park, it. it's so easy, wow. it's, yeah, why didn't I do this years ago, yeah. I don't know. <laughs> Really? Yeah. It's so, I get a different response every single time from everyone on here. Every single really? time. That's a good one, though. I like that one. Yours is my favorite so far. Well, Sorry, no offense That's to okay. the fans. Yeah. But I think we relate on that. Yeah. Um, so when you're performing your songs, what is it, or when you're performing or when you're playing them, mm-hmm. what is it that you want your audience to understand through your music? That's a good question. What do I want them to understand? Hmm. 
I don't know. I don't really feel like I'm in teach mode when I'm up there. I feel like I'm in share mode. Mm-hmm. Like I'm sharing with people. I just want them to, uh, I don't know, pay attention. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Most of the places, it's like a bar or a club. <laughs> you just want and them like to listen. Nobody's looking at you, <laughs> and it's really boring. Um, for me, I even get bored if no one's paying attention. But I, I need to change that attitude. Uh-huh. I need to be happy if two people show up, you know, and yeah. give the best show I can give. Mm-hmm. But, yeah, I don't know. Very exciting. Um, I'm going to play one more song from you. Is that cool? That's fine. Actually, we still have more time, so I'll play a few more songs from okay. you. Okay. Um, what should I play? What do you suggest? Let's hear um, Old School Dance off the Quilt CD, the pink one. Okay. And it's number, like, 16, perhaps? Old School Dance. Got it right here. Okay. If you are just tuning in, you can go to my website, ericvega.com. I'm really honestly excited to have you here. Thank you, Eric. Because I have followed you for a long time. That's um, cool. And I, it's an inspiration for me to meet you because I feel like musically and artistically, you've inspired me to do some stuff, too. Really? As a solo artist, because I think hmm. I followed you as a solo artist at more than <laughs> with the other stuff, because yeah. I'm not really familiar with that, but I am familiar with that. I know the Mama Award nominations, and for me, I think that's a big deal, you know? Thank you. And it is a big deal it, for it anyone. Is, it is a big deal, yeah. And it's, uh, for the work you do, it's it's amazing. It's a big deal because you get the recognition that you deserve as an artist. It's you know? really cool. So, yes, thank you for coming on. You're We're going to have... Um, Old School Dance, right here, right? Yes? Yes. And w- once again, ericvega.com. Go on my website. You'll see his link, his MySpace link, or you can go to my Facebook. He is my friend, <laughs> and he's also liked by me. So go on there. Check it out. He has a show this Saturday, 9 p.m. at Jack's on H. And um, I, won't, I will be out of town. If not, then I would totally go. <laughs> I know. <laughs> everyone, I could have gone, and everyone could have bought me a drink. There you go. Uh, and bought you, Well, everyone could still go and buy you a drink Heck over there. Yeah. So. <laughs> All right, you guys, um, check it out. Give (laughs) give him a like, give him an ad, and find out all you can about him. We will be right back with a few more questions with Moon Trent. Thanks for tuning in. No, I'm not talking about that. (laughs) Okay, not on the air. Um, (laughs) I got Moon Trent here. If you're just tuning in, Moon Trent here. Hello, 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 meow. That was me. That was him. The low voice was him, and the high one was me. But anyway, um, awesome. Awesome music here. I'm a fan. I'm a Moon Trent fan. You should be too. Go on my website. You'll see his junk on there. And you also find him on my Facebook. You can like him. I like him already. Per- both personally and Facebookly. Thank you, Eric. I like you too. Oh, thanks. Um, okay. So, I want you to tell me. Yes. Oh, gosh. I just had. I sw- I'm, you're, I'm drawing blanks right now. Okay. What do you think the three most important qualities are of an artist persistence is number one talent is number two Mm, dedication dedication is number three really i think so if you feel that you're an artist you should dedicate some time and some energy to it and what do you think the theory is behind being an artist because i'm gonna get a little little deep here i have my own personal views on what becoming an artist is some people believe that it takes years of training and years of experience and years of schooling. Mm-hmm. Some people think that it's just getting out there and go and do it. And, you know, there's a lot of different ways of becoming an artist, growing as an artist. What's your personal view on that? Well, since I've been at it for a while, I'm going to say stick with it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I mean, nowadays you just have to, you know, fart on YouTube and you get famous. Seven million people watch that. So... Do that, but do something else, too, so they can, you know, when they come, there's something else to look at. Yeah. Some, you know, something sub- substantial. So, you have videos on YouTube, right? I have a YouTube channel. Okay. They're what is that channel? Uh, YouTube.com slash Moon Trent. Oh, perfect. Homework. Okay. And, uh, Check it out, there's everyone. There's silly videos. There's fun videos. There's what I consider stupid videos. Mm-hmm. Like, Which uh, are usually fun. Spam. And Christmas trees and rainbows and oh. all kinds of puppies. and Aww. Then I've got my music stuff. And <laughs> other than, you know, uh-huh. Then I've got my personal stuff up there, too. I thought that was part of the music video. Yeah. <laughs> That's just the, the puppies and the music. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I should do a video with puppies and rainbows. That's a good... Hey, hey I was already ready to rainbows. look it up. Yes. Yes. Double, Double rainbows. rainbows yes. <laughs> um, and do you have all your stuff up on there? What is that process like? What is the process like of getting the gigs, getting the videos, getting the music all together? 
Because you know a lot of people. It's just, you know, at this stage, I get asked to do shows. Mm-hmm. That's nice. I'm really lucky. Um, I do pursue some of the other shows in the Bay Area that I want to do. Mm-hmm. Um, I try to play in Merced as much as I can. Mm-hmm. There's not a lot of venues. I try to play there as much as I can. Um, I try to get out of town. You know, it's nice to play in town, but get out of town. Mm-hmm. Go play somewhere else. See what they think. Where all your friends aren't there. And what is that like? You just go and get up and just leave and say, hey, I'm here. Can I play here? Or um, how does that work exactly? Well, you know, every gig's a different situation. Mm-hmm. I'm playing a show uh, in May in Oakland at oh, this place nice. called The Purple House. Okay. Which is like a big hippie commune. Mm-hmm. And uh, one of my friends called and asked if I would do that. And then... There's, like, we're talking about YouTube. There's a video on there called All the Way Mm -hmm. that Candace and I did recently to Mm -hmm. kind of showcase what we're doing. And a band called Disappear Fear saw that. They're coming to San Francisco, asked if we would play at the Du Nord. Oh, nice. And the Sorry Plow with them. So we're hopefully going to do that in July. Very cool. Yeah. So make those YouTube videos. People will see them. They will ask you to do shows. YouTube videos, everyone. That's the key. It's all about YouTube this year. Yeah. It we don't know what's going to happen next year, but this year, <laughs> all that I'm YouTube. sure it'll be something new, weird. Yes. Yeah, I'm funky. I I can't. I I got a Twitter and I hate it. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I have MySpace, Friendster, friggin' uh, Facebook, and that's it. Twitter, four squares. I'm not next. going four square. <laughs> if I go four square, shoot me in the head. <laughs> I'm not doing four square. I'm sure I don't want anybody to know where I am. Yes, that's yeah. the check-in one. I I have no idea. Oh, I don't know is it either. really? I don't know. I think that's what Ooh, it is. I you have say one. like I'm at McDonald's and you check in and I don't know something like that. Wow, I have I. And then people can stalk you. Yes, I I like stalkers. I don't. So I'm not going to be on oh, there. Okay. So don't look for me. <laughs> if it if there's a fake one, it's not me. Yes. <laughs> It'll probably be me as your oh, name on gosh, there. <laughs> I hope not. I'm getting fans. Eric, <laughs> dare you? <laughs> no, but um, okay, very cool. So you, you so you have that show too on in May. Oh yeah, coming up. Just look at my Facebook. There's all kinds of flyers and shows, and I promoted this you know interview on there, mm-hmm. and I promoted my Saturday show, and I like Facebook. I know a lot of people, friends of mine, I, I can name like five friends that deleted their Facebook profiles recently because it was just sucking their their soul into it or <laughs> That's something. That's true. They become Facebook. And uh, if I didn't have a band or music, you know, I probably wouldn't have a Facebook. Oh, yeah, definitely. I don't know. I totally know what I you mean. I don't know because it's, I don't, I don't know, man. It's pretty intense. Well, you, and you know, too, as an artist, like with the Twitter and everything, you you almost have to have all that stuff yeah. you know and that's the most frustrating Annoying. part of it yeah because it's just like and i could never ever ever get political or personal on my facebook right because then i'll lose like 20 people or like well you know, i feel like you know yeah exactly <laughs> you got you lose 20 and then Republicans you annoy people 20 because if they are on your myspace and your facebook and your email and they get like eight messages about the same show <laughs> they're not going to come yeah <laughs> they're not going to come that's true it's true know? I don't. I've tweeted like four times in my life, really? and it's all about I'm doing a show tonight. Yeah, I'm doing. A Some show people tonight. get really, really deep with that though. Sometimes it's. I mean, even for me, it's addicting when I see like a you know like something political going on, and then right. you see all the arguments. Like, right. Ooh, ooh, you wanna get in on it. You want to jump in, but then then it's there forever. <laughs> <laughs> so what I usually do is like when it's heated the most, I jump in and say, "Hey, www.ericvega.com, check it out." Ah, uh, shameless <laughs> I know, self-promotion. I, know. I love it. <laughs> That's the way to do it, dude. <laughs> All right. Well, we're going to play one more song, then we will be right back with Moon Trent with a couple more questions. Check them out. Check them out. Check them out. Moon Trent. Uh, look them up on Facebook, Moon Trent. Go to my website. His MySpace is on there, but preferably now that we know that he yeah. loves all this internet networking, you could go to his Facebook and add him That's and look for him every day and message him. And oh, man. What are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> and love about him. all that. Thank Facebook love him. That's what you want to do. Facebook loves me. What should I play, Moon? Uh, which record are we talking about? Point two. Anyone. What's your know. personal favorite song out of all the songs you've made on here? Let's play number one off of the in-person record. It's called Invitation. Okay. Invitation here from the in-person album. And we will be right back with a little bit more Moon Trent here at KCSS. Thanks for tuning in. Watch you looking at me. That was Moon Trent with the song 
The train song. And it's very different from your other stuff. I told you. I like it. I told you. I personally going like it. Going different directions I here. like the direction you are well, going, thanks, sir. sir. Very uh, different. And the song before that was Invitation from yes. the in-person album. Yes. I'm real excited to see what you have planned. And I'm just like, so I'm excited for the title, really, of the, of the next album. Oh, so <laughs> I know. I'm not making sense. No, but I, read were, it. I didn't know. We just talked about so much stuff, I wasn't sure. <laughs> Yeah, Silver Drafts, hopefully uh, Silver drafts. by uh, August, September. Okay, August, or September. Or if not sooner. Who knows? So everyone keep your eyes peeled. August or September-ish. Yes. I love and iTunes. you are on iTunes too, yeah. right? Yeah. My label is CD Baby. Okay. So all my records are available there, and but they're everywhere. You know, <laughs> Napster, you name it. They're Napster, I'm Amazon, digital. and all I'm that stuff. Saying. Yes. Okay, cool. Oh, do it through Amazon. That's the that's the funnest way because you can buy individual MP3s and everything like mm-hmm. that. I think you can do that on everywhere, right? You can do that on iTunes. But oh, it's a See, I don't have iTunes. It is a little more expensive. <laughs> yes, yeah, for artists and right. for consumer. Right. So CD Baby's the way to go, though. Yes, they hook really you up is. with iTunes and all that. Oh yeah, definitely. Real cheap, and that's good for everyone to know too of how that all works. Is just yeah. that most of the time I go through a CD Baby too. Right. CD Baby is like the distributor oh, of it all. Look you up on there. Yes. Nice. Um, so, yes. Well, we're going to say our goodbyes here soon. But before we go, I wanted to ask you, what is the one line of advice that you live by? Do something for your career every day. Really? One thing. Whether it's lick a stamp and mail off your CD to a radio station or write that next song. Just try to do something every day. One thing for one your thing career day. every day. You know who told me that? Who? Tori Amos. Really? Yes. When did when did that happen? I've run into her like five times. She loves Dave. Mm-hmm. She likes his vibe a little more than mine. I'm a little intense for her, but uh, <laughs> we just uh, we met her years ago when she first came on tour to San Francisco. Really? Yeah. Wow. And uh, I don't know her anymore, but I'm sure if I see her, she'll remember me. What I wanted to ask you too. I have to go get that door in a second. But um, I wanted to ask you. I wanted to talk about the Howard Stern show. Oh, I Howard did want to talk show. about that. All right, we can talk about that. Let, let me give one more quick song before Sounds we leave, good. and then we're going to come back and talk All about right, it we'll again. All right, we'll talk about Howard Stern. So, um, which one should I play? Can I pick one? Yes, you can. Is that possible for me I, to pick one? I would love for you to I pick one. I hope you don't hate what I pick, because I make crappy choices. That's okay. In life. I understand. But now but now you're telling me to. Um, are you going to get that? Do you think you can get that door for me? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. Out the door. Good. So we can talk about Howard Stern okay. now. Okay. Sure. So um, tell me about that. I saw that on uh, you posted on Facebook. Yeah. Isn't that weird? And you were on the Howard Stern show. I've been on show. there like three times. Really? Yeah. And how did that gig come along? Um, I was in that band Brown Star. Uh-huh. So I sent Howard Stern's, uh, I don't know, producer, uh-huh. a Brown Star CD, and I guess he gave it to Howard Stern. And they started talking about the fact that there was a band called Brown Star uh-huh. in San Francisco. Uh-huh. So we were going to go to New York to do a gig. Mm-hmm. So we called up the Howard Stern Show and said, Brown Star is coming to New York. And they said, do you want to come on the show? Oh, fine. Absolutely. So we went on the show. Mm-hmm. The only weird part was we weren't allowed to promote the show that we came to New York for. Oh, uh-huh. Because the people that we were doing the show for... Hated Howard Stern. <laughs> so they told us, don't talk about the show, because we don't want those kind of people oh, at the drama. show. Uh-huh. So it was like, all the way to New York, and I can't talk about why I'm here. <laughs> so that was kind of strange. And then the second time I was on Howard Stern, they liked what I did the first time in New York. So they called me in San Francisco. I was living there. And they said, would you do it again? I said, sure. Mm-hmm. This time, Las Vegas. Uh-huh. I said, fine. So they flew me to Las Vegas. Uh-huh. They put me up for, God, a week. Uh-huh. For a 20-minute segment on the Howard Stern Show. Wow. That was it. Intense. It was pretty weird. I saw that on there, I and I was like, hey, hey. He's tall. Hey. He's oh, really nice, too. And I said to him in Vegas, I said, do you remember me from New York? He says, yeah, I remember you, Moon. No. Like, That's so weird. <laughs> Howard Stern knows who I am. So strange. <laughs> he remembered you. That's That was, when I saw that, I was like, no. Yeah. yeah. No. It was true. So we finally got those clips up on YouTube. Yeah. And uh, the Vegas one's going to be up there soon. Somebody's in New York has it. I don't have it. Okay. But, um, yeah, that's how I got on the Howard Stern Show. Very exciting. I'm with the star. I'm sitting with the star here today. <laughs> um, Moon, I think we're going to go ahead and start 
getting out of here. All right. But um, I'm glad you told me what you told me. What was it? One piece of work for your career every day. Do something every day. for your career every day. One thing. One for thing your, every one day. Thing. Okay. Well, luckily I got a I got a um, easy ticket out here because I've met you and I've talked to you. So that's one thing. Yeah. Yes, that's one thing. Now I can just relax for the rest of the day. That's right. right. <laughs> All right, you guys. Um, Thank you, thousands, millions, for coming on my show. My pleasure, Eric. Very Vega. fun. It's already been an hour. See how it flies by so it fast. It really did fly. Um, go to my website. Last time, check out Moon Trent. Go to Facebook. Type in Moon Trent. I think you're the only Moon Trent on there, correct? Yes, sir. And you can like him. You can check out his show that he will be having this Saturday at Jacks on H, correct? Yeah. Please come see my show Saturday night in Modesto. It'll at be Jackson fun. H. I'm also playing with Rachel Renee. Okay. So it's a double bill. There you go. What more can you ask for, right? Okay. Go <laughs> go to uh, at 9 o'clock. He will be performing there. And also you have one May 17th. Uh, May 19th May and 19th. May 27th. May 19th and May 27th. That's on his Facebook that you can That's check right. out. That's right. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you so Eric. much for coming. Woo-hoo. Yes, thanks for coming. Next week we're going to have Jake Benson. I had a horrible... A humiliating um, phone interview last week, and I had to make it up for him. I was only talking for like two minutes, so I'm going to do it again next week. He is a YouTube remix sensation, and he is also a musician, uh, uh, m- makes remixes artist as well. So don't miss out on that next week. Same time, same place. Thank you guys for tuning in, and let's play one more song by you, Moon. Which one should I play? Mm. Is this the time where I get to choose? Let's see. You have to choose. Okay. Let's How see. about, let me see. I don't know. The one that speaks to me what is... What speaks to you? It's free. It's free. That's a good one. Okay, because I'm cheap. That's good. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you guys. Thanks for tuning in. And once again, Moon Trent is here. Check him out on my Facebook and my website. And I'll talk to you guys next week. Bye. Bye. Bye.